Hello, plant people. How are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're using a subscriber asked question as the way to format this video. So if you guys did not know, if you leave your questions or your requests down below in the comments, they go into a list, into a queue, and I kind of select them in order, unless if you guys are really pushing me for one certain video, then of course I put that to the front of the queue. But one of the questions I thought that was just the best and the funniest was whether or not you can compost your scooby from your kombucha setups and or just add it to water and what kind of benefits it brings. So I was asked this question, I immediately went to Google to look at different research papers on what exactly is in a scooby on a in a kombucha setup and I got some ranges of stuff but I have a set few type of microbes that seem to be kind of congruent throughout all the scooby options out there and surprisingly enough they actually apply to soil so i'm going to go through everything that's in this some of these i cannot pronounce a lot of these are yeast if you are a microbiologist out there you know the nightmares of saying yeast names i can do the bacter like the bacteria uh, but yeast not so much so i'll be inserting the names here along with my horrible absolutely horrible pronunciations of these uh, microbes and we'll be going through why they're beneficial and just some really really cool stuff here so the first microbe on the list is gluconobacter so this is one that there isn't a lot of study of this microbe being inoculated into a soil and showing benefits and that isn't because they've done it and nothing's happened it's actually because it's just really there's not a lot of research there however one thing or one common theme i found when it came to diving into the soil science reviews or um, journals about glucanobacter is that it is particularly prevalent under the rhizosphere or in the rhizosphere of fruit trees bushes and plants so that's actually really interesting to me they found them in grape grape vineyards they found a lot of gluconobacter um, apple tree orchards that sort of thing there's not a lot of research on it because it's just not an addition that people have however theoretically if the adult plants in these orchards or in these vineyards have gluconobacter in the rhizosphere that means that they're releasing exudates to single for gluconobacter to actually come to that area which is interesting um so in theory if we were trying to establish a blueberry bush an apple tree a pear tree a grapevine in our yards and we used the scooby from a kombucha bottle in the base of it and kind of planted that in there you would be reducing the stress of the plant because it wouldn't have to be releasing exudates to call in glucanobacter it would just be already relatively prevalent in the area and ready to support the plant so i can't say that that's a definitive fact all I can say is that it's present in the soil rhizosphere of fruiting trees, bush, grapevines, um, and as an additive, it's never been added. However, in theory, if it's present, that plant most definitely is going to use it. So if you are planning to do fruit bush or a tree or something, technically, you may see benefits from using the scooby in the kombucha. So just a fun fact there. If you guys want to see a video on how to make kombucha and how to actually get the scooby let me know i used to make my own kombucha like years ago i wouldn't actually mind doing that again so just let me know i'd be down for it i'd be down for it i want to show you guys how to actually make your own types of microbes anyways so that'd be a good place to start so the next one is Exetobacter. It is an N2 fixing bacteria. So I've repeatedly talked about rhizobium bacteria and its symbiotic relationship. It forms with legumes. It makes those nodule looking things that then fix atmospheric nitrogen N2 out of the atmosphere and places it in the soil. So Exetobacter is very similar to rhizobacteria 
and the sense that it doesn't necessarily need the symbiotic relationship with a specific family of plants, but rather it's just present in the soil and does the end to fixing kind of on its own. So if you're looking for some free nitrogen fertilizer, technically the Scooby in a kombucha setup has the Exidobacter in it and it will help with N2 fixing. Beyond all that, the Exidobacter also has been noted to help with phosphate and other mineral sol solubilization. So it's just helping to break apart big molecules in the soil and snap them and make them into bioavailable dishes for the plant. So if you watched Plant Miss and our 17 Essential Plant Nutrients playlist, you know what I'm talking about because you, I went through each type and exactly what form those have to be in. So the Exidobacter actually helps with that. And there is research showing that this particular type of bacteria also isn't very good at controlling plant pathogens. So certain bacteria, good bacteria, will fight against bad bacteria, for lack of a better term, and uh, just kind of help beat out any pathogenic issues that may arise with our plants, either in the soil below the surface or above. So that's just a fun fact there. Now the next ones are yeast. So there is Zygosaccharomyces, there's Saccharomyces, and then there's Gizosaccharomyces. Don't quote me on that. There's a microbiologist watching, I know it, and they're totally gonna correct me in the comments. They're gonna phonetically spell it out for me because they love me so much. So one really interesting thing here, guys, is that soil scientists aren't understanding yeast yet. We really don't know its role and we just recently found out that it actually plays a role at all in soil to the point that we started looking into this more and in urban environments we realized that there is a lack of yeast and in natural environments there is some yeast but it's slowly declining over time and we yet don't understand the role it plays in our soil environments. So this is really interesting. So when you add a scooby from a kombucha to the soil or to your compost or vera compost or whatever you just do with it, technically you're adding yeast and ultimately re-inoculating soil that has been degraded of yeast. So I just wanna list out some of the things we do understand about yeast and the roles it plays in soil. So one of the main things is it actually plays a role in maintenance of the soil structure and aggregate forma formation. So when it comes to a clay soil, that means it actually repels the clay and causes more of a structure to it rather than just a mush. And when it comes to sand, it actually acts as a binder and holds our sand particles together so that when we take a shovel, it's not just like beach sand that falls over the sides, but it actually kind of sticks together, it acts like a glue and yeast helps play a role in that. We also have realized that yeast is very important and again, mineralizing of different nutrients and in particular mineralizing the nutrients that was ground up or ground out of glaciers. So this can include things like iron, calcium, manganese, magnesium, you name it. So it actually helps to degrade those by kind of eating away at them over time. And one of the most ecologically um, prevalent or necessary processes that yeast serves is that it actually is a food source for predators. So this can be micro predators that we can't see such as nematodes, or it can be larger sized predators that we may be able to see with our eyes. But ultimately it comes down to it being a food source that helps grow the populations of beneficial predators in our soil. When we have more beneficial predators, we have less issues with things like ants, for example, which ants can be good, but they also can be bad. So we need something there to be a predatory species to them, which in this case could be nematodes. As an example, you can get predatory nematodes in a bottle just to control ants. You can also control things like slugs and snails, kind of keep that balance in the garden with nematodes. And yeast acts as a food source for these predators 
when the normal food they eat is not yet accessible to them. So because they have life cycles, ants are here and there at different times of the year. When the ants aren't prevalent, the nematodes have something else to eat, which means they can eat the yeast. So you see how it just acts as like a temporary filler in the life cycle of potentially harmful insects that they would normally eat. This is really, really cool stuff. So with that being said, you can technically compost, add kombucha to your water or your Scooby to your watering systems. Um, you can add it maybe in the hole when you transplant. You could just simply, you know, dig a hole and put it in your soil. You name it, Scoobies are approved. I never thought I'd say that in a million years, but here I am. Scoobies are approved. I would rather you use a Scooby than buy products from the store. That is wild. So anyways, very cool stuff. I wanna thank the subscriber who asked this question so much. I really enjoyed researching this. It took me a while because I literally had to look up each individual microbe separately and look up journals for it, but very cool stuff. Great video. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and let me know in the comments down below what video you wanna see next. Like I said, I do this all by request. I wanna thank you guys for watching. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.